Hi, I'm Erica Ramirez, founder of Gilly and host of What About Your Friends, a podcast dedicated to the many lives of friendship and how it's portrayed in pop culture. Every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, I talk to my best friend, Stephen Othello, and your favorites from within the Ringer and beyond about friendships on TV, in movies, pop culture, and our real lives. So join me every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, where we try to answer the question TLC asked back in the day, what about your friends? This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, It means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome to Bachelor Party. It's charity season, everybody. I'm Juliet Littman. I am joined today by my esteemed and delightful and hilarious colleague, Jody Walker. Jody, welcome. How are you? Juliet, thank you so much for having me. Always wonderful to be on Bachelor Party. I love it here. I'm great. <laughs> I think we we both mentioned before the pod. I think we're both like physically a little, a little shaken. Yes. Um, but mentally here and really excited to be in charity season. I am too. You know, I was I, I we took a break. I feel like Zach's season was like so many lifetimes ago. It was I was in Spain when it ended. So it was the end of March. So it has been three months. And I feel like that was like bachelor summer break. And I feels good. I needed it. You know, I really, I poured my heart and soul into Love Island UK season three. Uh, Jody, have you watched that? Love Island UK season three. I don't know why I'm repeating the facts because I haven't watched any Love Island. I was just <laughs> like, that's not current. That doesn't sound it's from, current. It's from 2017. I, you know, and I haven't, I know you and Kelly are doing that. I should have gotten on board when it started well, so that I could there actually... For Last year, I wrote an article about Love Island, despite having never watched it. It was more about like the mechanism of how it airs in England, because um, the site was like doing a, a package on British TV. And so I did learn a lot about Love Island. And I talked to like a handful of Love Island podcasters. And they were all so smart about TV. And I did find it all really fascinating. But you know what? Every night, every night, you got to watch when you're watching it live. For me, it's every morning I wake up and I watch it on Hulu. Somehow worse, Juliet. That is somehow <laughs> worse. <laughs> I've always been a morning TV watcher, like my whole life. I like to wake up early and watch TV. I just always have. I used to watch music videos. Anyway, we're not talking about charity. <laughs> Sorry. I've, I've derailed us. But my, the point was, I'm ready to get back into The Bachelor. And listen, people, get your mind right. Get fit. Get, your, get whatever you need to get involved. Because we got charity this summer. And then in the fall, on Monday nights, there's going to be Bachelor in Paradise. And on Tuesday nights, there's going to be Golden Bachelor, which I'm fucking excited about. So we're here. We're, we're going to, we're just, we're getting going. It's going to be awesome. And I have to say, great group of guys for charity, which is why we're here today. We're going to go through them. I was just like, wait, what? This is a real solid bunch of 25 men. Jody, what was your first reaction upon perusing their bios? Yeah, I found myself very intrigued by them. I'm realizing that I don't even think I've looked at them as like a group unit. But in general, as I was going Nor through, I. I was like, hot, hot, interesting job, hot, hot, cute, <laughs> cool. Um, and so they do see. And also you said like get fit for this bachelor season. And if you need any fitness instructors, I think that actually all of these young men, uh, Moonlight, 
They all have two jobs. They all have two jobs. Do they all have two jobs or are they all unemployed? That's my question for you. I, I actually think they seem highly employed. <laughs> They're all like medical device salesmen who also are fitness instructors. Wait, that is rude. There's several actual doctors. Do not denigrate them. Well, and- that's and to say that the doctors too. have one job. The ones who like <laughs> the doctors are just doctors and they're working 80 hours a week. The travel nurse is like pretty busy. I'm sure he like lives, you know, in a cool van as many of the travel nurses I know do. But all of the medical device salesmen are like <laughs> also realtors. Well, that's good to have two streams of, of revenue. I was taken by the number of doctors. I was like, did Charity specify that she's interested in men in the medical field? Or like, did she say that she required an MD? That was striking to me. I'm sure that she said. Doctors only. Although it kind of makes sense. You know, she is in like, she, she's, she's a therapist. A therapist. Yeah. So it kind of, I can see that going together. I have a theory about this though, which is like, they really need to reload. Like the bachelor needs a new way forward, you know, to compete in this era of reality TV and like, 20 years on, this is 21 years on, like really needs to like find a, a, like a new existence. You know, it's like have like a midlife crisis. I think the last few years, this gives me hope because I'm like, are they just gunning for a doctor to be the next bachelor? Because like, I would definitely prefer like a, a, like a hot, a hot doctor over like a hot software salesman, which I feel like is what we've had for the last many years. You know, I never expected that to be the pivot that The Bachelor makes, but I would love to just see it go full medical staff and like slowly transition into a Grey's Anatomy-like structure. Oh my God, great idea. (laughs) Which I know you would love. I absolutely would. I mean, that got got an illicit, like, oh my God, elicited a legitimate (laughs) OMG for me. So yes, I would love that. Did you watch that reality show on Netflix that followed like doctors in the... I did, yeah. Lennox Hill. You know, yeah. I really enjoyed that show. And I just think if we could go full reality medical dating, maybe that's the ticket. It seems organic. Um, The black woman doctor on that show was amazing. She was like... The best part of the show by far. However, Jody, that show is super depressing. So okay, well maybe <laughs> I'm. <laughs> it certainly had no element of romance. I am imagining <laughs> combining The Bachelor and that show, and then yeah, maybe taking out all the depressing parts, <laughs> like COVID. I'll co- but like COVID. I'll keep. I'll keep brainstorming. I'll keep chewing on this. Okay, <laughs> come back to us. But I I do like this turn towards the professional. And I think it's also necessary. They got to get rid of like the influencers. And this is, I kind of think this could be a, a good reset this season. Um, we'll see what happens when it actually plays out. But like Charity's, I think, going to be a great bachelorette. Her press tour so far has been impressive. She um, seems very poised as she did on the show. She seems like she's in a good headspace. Spoiler alert, she'll be on this podcast next week. Um, so I'll report back. But I feel like I- I'm hopeful this can be a good reset for the show uh, in a-, a new way forward. Also, notably, new showrunners. Uh, there's this woman named Claire, whose last name I forget, who was the Bachelor Canada showrunner. She's come to the United States. And Bennett Gravener is still one of the showrunners. And there's a third whose name is escaping me. I apologize to him. Mike Fleiss is out. And I feel like this is like the dawn of a new era. And I- I'm hopeful about it. Something about it does feel new. And one of those things is just that, like, I feel... I, it, the, the season of The Bachelor feels so long ago. It does feel like we've been off for a long time. Charity, and I, I certainly don't mean this in a bad way, like, feels like kind of a blank canvas. I yeah. think in, like, the best way possible. I It's almost like I can't remember what she's like. So it will genuinely <laughs> be like being introduced to her on the premiere. Like, I remember... That she's nice. I remember that she's a therapist. I believe I drafted her very early last season because I loved that she was a therapist. I I like her a lot. I just feel like, yeah, it could it could be something new. Also, they got Mariah Carey's fantasy for her teaser uh, preview, which is crazy to me. And it actually did like get me amped watching it. I was like, they got <laughs> fantasy? Hell Yeah. That era of Mariah Carey is like probably, other than the Backstreet Boys, like my favorite like era of any musician ever. The best. I mean, always, I would say Always Be My Baby is definitively my favorite song. Nothing makes me feel more and like always feel good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would like to make a promo music video of you to always be my baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to mention that that to someone in video when we get off when we get off this call. <sighs> that's a gr- that's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I will say what my main recollection about Charity from Zach's season is that Zach liked spending time with her. Yeah. They clearly didn't have like the love connection, but I think that bodes really well for her as a lead because he just like she clearly had a good personality, made him feel comfortable. It seemed like the other women liked her as well. They like often defended her. Um, and so I, I think I'm hopeful. I think she'll, I think she'll be a great bachelorette. She's Southern. I do She's remember Southern. that about her too. And it feels like a while since we've had a Southern lead. She's from Georgia. And yeah, I'm trying to think. Jojo is from Dallas, but Texas is kind of its own beast. You would know better than me. True. Our other Southern bachelorettes, Emily Maynard, who is from North Carolina. Um, Andy Dorfman was also from Georgia. Good season. But you Very- know, Andy's from Atlanta. Charity is from Columbus, which is like, that's yeah, like explain, real Georgia. Explain that, okay? <laughs> I mean, just Charity has an accent, you know? Like, yeah. Columbus is, and Atlanta is definitely the South, but it's basically like its own state. It's just this whole other thing. And Columbus, Georgia, I mean, that is for real. Uh, that's like, it's not a small town, but it's like, you know, it's just like a mid-sized Georgia town. And I, I think she's going to be bringing some of those Southern sensibilities, she will be dating mostly men from California. So I hope that she enjoys that. (laughs) Well, I do think that the SEC is meant for The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. And she went to Auburn, which is great. Obviously, our Hannah Brown, who I, I think her season was probably the best Bachelorette season ever. She was another SEC gal. So I feel good about that too. It's just, there's a lot of positive signs. On that note, I'd like to get into the men. We're going to go through them briefly. There's 25, which I'm happy about. We don't need fucking 30 men. So that's great. (laughs) It is a smaller group. I like that. I like it too. Let's cut out the bullshit. There's a lot of bloat around The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So this is great. 25 men. Let's get into it. And I got to be honest, our first guy, Aaron B. This is what really gave me hope. I wrote my notes. Great start! Exclamation point. A man who reads and an autodidact. And I was just like, this is great. <laughs> now, he is a software salesman. So I made fun of that already in this podcast. And I would say I frequently do. But uh, he taught himself how to play the violin and the piano. And he noted that he likes to read James Patterson novels. And I was just like, I'm in. I'm sold. That would be a swipe right for me. He noted that he liked to read James Patterson novels after saying he also likes to listen to Tyler, the creator. And I just found those like two very different artists, which I think, you know, speaks well to him being a dynamic person. When you were like starting off with a bang, Aaron B. And then you said he likes to read. I was like, oh, good for Juliet. Because my first note is that he is good looking. This man is very handsome. He is is. wearing like a very nice looking chambray shirt, maybe even an actual denim shirt with like pearl snaps. He just, yeah, it looks nice. looks good. He also just looks like, you know, general thought on these men, normal. A lot of normies, a lot of just like, okay, yeah, I could see this guy like out in the world. And maybe that's how they're presenting them in their bios, but way more like this is someone you would actually encounter in the world than this is someone you would encounter in in a bar in Venice, California, um, looking to meet a bachelor person. You know, I was just like, good stuff. This could be like the trends of right now, but not a lot of like tall hair. I feel like anytime I'm Mm -hmm. looking at bachelor bios, there's just so much tall hair. (laughs) And these guys, you know, a lot of normal haircuts, some long hair, um, some better, some worse in regards to the long hair front. But I like Aaron. He taught me a new word. He is... Me too. How do you think you say this? Spexophobic? Spexophobic, I think, yeah. Scared of wasps. And, you know, I think everybody's a little scared of wasps, but he must be very scared of wasps. I also have a random true fear, uh, trypophobia, the fear of, like, little holes. (laughs) What? I've never heard that one either. It's (laughs) It's not that uncommon, but it's like like honeycomb or like a locust seed pod. Like when there are like a lot of little repetitive holes, can't do it, can't look at it, makes me sick. And so, you know, I do relate to Aaron in that way. (laughs) Jody, that's so weird. I look forward to you being on The Bachelor. (laughs) Other people listening are really relating to me and Aaron right now. 
<laughs> okay. I'm happy that you found Aaron. I hope you guys can... Uh, We're going to be very happy together. <laughs> You're gonna, Yeah, you guys are going to be tight. All right, let's move on. Aaron S. Would you rather be just in a vacuum? Would you rather be Aaron B or Aaron S? Like, I think it's pretty clear that Aaron B sounds better than Aaron S. Oh, name-wise, which one? Yeah. Aaron B, Aaron S. Yeah, I, Aaron B, you know, you could call someone that in elementary school. That really... That rolls off the tongue. Or like in 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 like a rapper name, like Aaron B. Um, that really reads young child, I think. <laughs> like <laughs> I like Maddie B. He- <laughs> I was thinking of Heather B from the real world, okay. who's been a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Our mind there at B is a common last yeah. syllable for rappers. Because it like rhymes yeah. and whatever. Wow, anyway, poor Aaron S. Aaron S. Also, it sounds like Baroness, but not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very into words, this pod. I guess so. <laughs> I felt that Aaron S. seemed computer generated, like everything about him, including like, here's my random funny fact. I like to have Froyo delivered. Like that's truly a serial killer behavior. Have a I was going to say, yeah, that's like, that's not a, re- that is like a red, red flag. That is the worst possible thing to have delivered. And he said, heavy on the toppings. So weird. So you have to go through and select them all in Uber Eats? I mean, <gasps> I like Aaron because I like his jawline. And he looks like... He really looks like this actor, uh, Ryan Eggold. Do you know who that oh, is? Oh, yeah. Of course. He's yes, on course. Like, New Amsterdam. He was on The Blacklist. Uh, you I know, recently like- saw him in the wild. I went to a play and he was there with his friend. He was there as like a... You know, his companion was his friend, um, Ben McKenzie. Oh, wow. D- didn't know they were buds. Yeah, they're, I think they're just like good New York actor friends. The New York actor friendship scene of like people who want to live a quiet a quiet life being yeah. actors, very, very intriguing to me. And like, they're definitely part of it. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> well, I never knew to be intrigued by it, but I certainly am now. Separate pot, I guess. Um, Aaron S. is a firefighter from San Diego. Of course, they all are. And the Unfortunately, the first li- line of his bio is Aaron S. is a real life Superman. And I'm going to I'm going to give Aaron S. the benefit of the doubt that he did not write that. But it's such a weird opening line. And it doesn't really go explained. Like, I guess they mean because he's a firefighter. But I think so. Yeah. That's not what Superman does. It's not <laughs> even close to what Superman does. Like, there's there's no commonality there. The, the creative license they take with these bios, sometimes I feel so bad for the guys because there's just no chance that that's what they said. Well, well, this is a great segue into someone you were alluding to before, Adrian, who's a realtor, but also a fitness coach in his spare time. And Adrian said that his um, dream job would be culinary traveler. And that made me wonder, does he know what a job is? Which made me once again ask the question, employed, overly employed or underemployed? (laughs) Who's to say? I think he was one of the ones that had two jobs. Yes, he's a realtor and a fitness instructor. You were definitely thinking of him in your mind. (laughs) I want to be clear that I was thinking of like 20 of them. So many of them have this exact (laughs) combination of jobs. But I mean, what culinary traveler, that just means like influencer, right? Food influencer. Yeah, yeah. Culin- food Anthony Bourdain, like he wants to be, which That's you a different know, guy. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, right. A different guy did say that. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Bourdain was his idol. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think that's actually a third job that he could add. It would be pretty easy to get that one in there. Yeah, because it's not a job. Like, also, a hobby is not a job. People like to travel and eat. I mean, just like a side note. One of one thing that's creeped into these bachelor bios from the real world, and that's really unfortunate, is adopting travel and like interest in travel is a crucial part of your personality. Like that is like every person on a dating app is like, oh, I like to travel, or like, oh, I'm I'm off to here. Or, like here's me in in Machu Picchu or whatever. And like the overemphasis on travel as like a requisite and are we compatible? is actually nonsensical because travel is like an escape from real real life. And so unless you are a culinary traveler. And so I feel like we need to... In which case, it's an occupation. We need to eradicate this from the dating vernacular. I think what's more interesting is like what kind of traveler you are. Because yeah, I like to travel too. 
I would be such a nightmare for, I'm sure, a ton of these men to travel with. We were just in Europe together. I want you to know that every country I went to, I was booking my flight or my train the day before because I'm the worst. And like a lot of people can't hang like that. And actually, so what I would prefer in a travel companion is someone who would book the flights a week before. So that, like, that would be helpful to me. That's what I want to see on a dating app. I want to know what you're like if we're tra- if we're compatible travelers, not just if you like to travel. Great point. Everybody likes to travel. I know. And also like tent or like save all your money to blow it on luxury hotel. Like which which one are you? Like things like that. That's a yeah. great, great point. This is actually maybe a dating app. Uh, it might be a whole separate dating app. <laughs> That's a great point. And that, maybe a separate dating show. Jody, did you do that because you were in Europe and Europe lends itself to like just sort of like whimsical travel, like literally whimsical, like on a whim. Yeah. Or because that's how you travel all the time. Um, Generally, a thing about me is I'll get away with like as much as I possibly can. So like if I were traveling the United States, you can't book a flight the day before for $100. But in Europe, you can. So like, it definitely would have been better for me to be planning them a little earlier. I just (laughs) knew I could do it. So I did it. But like I was going to see Beyonce in London and I was basically like, I'm going to have to swim there if I don't book this flight today. Uh, and I did. And it was fine. That's awesome. How was the show? It was incredible. It was so Where great. Was it? Where was it? Yeah. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah. Which I had never been to before. We'll say very hard to get to for, or just far to get to from London. And there was like, a fire on the tube and like she oh, had God. to like delay the show a bit because so many people like it took so many people so long to get there. I just want to say shout out to public transportation. Europe does it right. America. Shout out. Let's make every week infrastructure week. Okay. Moving on. <gasps> Brayden. Brayden's a zero for me. I, really? I, in fact, here's what I wrote in my, my notes. So boring that I picked up my phone. I was like, I, I can't focus. I'm going to like just let's see what's happening on my phone. <laughs> A searing indictment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have three asterisks by Braden <laughs> because oh I like God. him. Um, and also, unfortunately, my first note is the jaw on this young man. I mean, he he does. He has a very strong jaw, and that's going to get you pretty far. Um, he's a travel nurse. I just think that's a cool that's job. Sweet. I've it always is. thought that's a really cool job, and like. Not only is it a cool job to have, I'm sure it lends itself to a lot of interesting stories and like being a dynamic person. I just, I think he might make a good first impression. He is wearing a really big necklace (laughs) that that (laughs) just tells its own story beyond his jawline. Um, Seems like kind of a, I don't know, maybe kind of an earthy guy. You're giving him so much credit, Jody, an earthy guy. You sound Look like at Paul that necklace from Juliet. Love is Blind, a witchy, a witchy woman, oh, an earthy guy. <laughs> he looks like an earthy guy, except he says specifically in his bio that he's not into meditation. And Brayden, same. And I'm not going to feel bad about it anymore. It's my least favorite part of a yoga class is the fucking meditating. I don't need to meditate. I came here for, for the workout. Okay, let's move I'm on. I'm good. This <laughs> mind is spinning and it prefers it that way. <laughs> Seriously. All right, next, Caleb A. Caleb A is the man who I who I wrote down. Oh, he's a hobbyist because he is a doctor. He is from Ann Arbor or he lives in Ann Arbor. And he also likes to do a lot of other things other than <laughs> being his being a doctor. It seemed he seemed great. I don't know. I like this guy. Like his sweater. I like his sweater. Uh, it definitely stands out. I don't know where he finds the time to do all these other things because he mentions specifically that he's working 80 hours a week right now, which is a lot. I know, I, I guess, I don't know. Do you That's think Dr. that means Life. he's a resident? He says yeah. in his, okay, so I meant to mention this at the top. I think that this year they did not do the like YouTube live, TikTok live, Jesse introduces all of these bios, which, you know, already a great look for great these new stuff. showrunners. Absolutely. Like, that was such, it was always such a waste of time. But they did make these little videos where the guys introduced themselves that I watched on Twitter. And they just say like their name, where they're from, their occupation. But I actually found them pretty illuminating as far as like a quick clip of what their personalities are like. Because 
Like some of them are really smiley. Some of them deliver the information in a way that makes you know they're social media people. Like they're using their hands and they're like, hey, it's me, Brayden. Uh, that's not a sample. That's, that was just a sample. I don't know if Brayden said that. But Caleb <laughs> says he's a family doctor in his uh, in his intro. So I did find that interesting. Oh, cool. Specific he's, form of medicine. He seems like a nice guy. He also likes to produce music and I think play the piano. So those are his hobbies. I'm I'm bullish on Caleb A. Um, I look forward think? to meeting him. He says his guilty pleasure is trash pizza. What do you think that means? I feel like it's like Domino's, like poor, low quality pizza. I like Domino's, but like maybe like Little Caesars. I think Little yeah. Caesars was was founded in uh, Michigan. So, oh, oh, get Little him bit on of the Western trivia for you. <laughs> Next, Caleb B. He's a pro wrestler. And to me, that means he will be bringing a lot to the table because wrestling is also reality television, basically. So um, this bodes well. Smart casting. He mentions, I think, in his bio that he's a villain in Mm -hmm. wrestling. He's cast as a villain, which is interesting. I was trying to remember Kenny was a pro wrestler. Kenny King, yeah. Kenny King. And I, it kind of seems like maybe he was a villain too. And he was delightful in real life. So Totally delightful, yeah. I like that guy a lot. What season was that? I can't even remember. Hannah? No, it was before Hannah. No, so long ago. JoJo, so maybe? It was like, like 2017. Was it Rachel's been. season? Becca? Let's look it up. <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Stand by. He was on season 13 of The Bachelorette, which I think was Rachel, if I'm wow. recalling correctly. I, I have personally drawn the Kenny comparison. I will say, I, I don't think he's Kenny. He's 24, which is really young. Yeah, Kenny was a was an adult. He had a daughter. and Yeah. Um, yeah, he, Charity's 27, by the way. And a lot of these guys do skew older, which I'm happy about. All right, let's move on. Chris. Chris is from White Plains, New York, which, like, is funny. It's sort of like being... I don't know. It's not, it's not funny. It's just, like, so normie to me as a New York person. I knew a lot of people from White Plains, like, where the mall is. And do you find his occupation normie? He's a world record jumper. Thank you very much. He has the Guinness World Records for highest standing box jump and highest standing backflip. David Jacoby and I talk about Guinness World Record holders <laughs> on Food News, not infrequently. Huh. And it's a lot of work to like get it certified and to like get that record. So he, you have to like really commit to it. And I've always wanted to know more about that process. So I hope he gets into it on the show. <laughs> I, I'm going to call Chris out, I think, as like a potential, maybe not villain, but like someone who rubs people the wrong way. He's very into jumping. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. His favorite sport is dunking. <laughs> Which, not a sport. I mean, dunking is part of a sport, but on its own, it is not a sport. But I'm sure he's like, now working on a world record in dunking. And he just seems so committed to this lifestyle of like being the best in something that, no offense, doesn't matter. I know that it matters to him. It's just like, it's kind of a strange personality quirk. He, it also says that he was a small town football star in his bio, which means high school. Yeah. Which is kind of weird to bring up at 27. Like, <laughs> Being so <laughs> like it's like when someone like who's middle aged like references like a paper they wrote in college. <laughs> yeah, like being so into these various accolades about himself. I think that's going to translate to screen. I think he's going to be very into himself, and he is one hundred percent going to do a backflip in his limo introduction. I was wondering how someone who loves dunk loves jumping so much feels about trampolines. Like, is that like a does that like bother him? Is that like a guess? Juliet? What? <laughs> what a what a I was gonna say what a leap. How embarrassing. What a <laughs> thought to have. I do I wonder what he thinks about trampolines. <laughs> like, does he think it's cheating? You know, is like is like is he does he view trampolines as like the Ozempic of his field? You know? Like I'm sure just, like, he does, they they're not included in the sport of jumping. I uh, he's <laughs> like he would never even touch a tram- trampoline. <laughs> I'm going to DM him and ask, how do you feel about trampolines? And no context. No, not at all. That's it. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. 
Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two-year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. All right, let's move on. Doton, 30. He's from Brooklyn, where I currently am. Um, And he's another doctor. I just, I don't know if this is just the Jewish woman in me, but I'm so biased towards being pro-doctor. It's completely irrational. Okay, Julia, I do have to tell you, I don't think he's a doctor. He's a, (laughs) okay, his, his title in the bio says integrative medicine specialist. In the video, he said integrative medicine consultant. And I did text my friends who are doctors because I was just trying to figure out if he's a doctor. Integrative medicine is a thing. We're like, integrative medicine is like, he's definitely in the medical field. His Instagram makes it look like he's a trainer. I think he's... I, I just don't know how you consult on medicine. I'm sure it is This real. is very disappointing. Oh, I my think God. He, I think he still has a wonderful job, Juliet. And he's still involved in medicine. And he's still very good looking. And his uh, video make him look... He looks really tall. Like, he's Nate tall. He's extremely handsome and looks fantastic in his denim shirt. Like, so fantastic. Good. So good. <laughs> and he's from Brooklyn. Yeah, he's from Brooklyn. It's great. I love it. So, Doton, we see you. Okay, next. James, he's 28. Only thing you need to know about him is that he's an Olivia Rodrigo stan. It's pretty important. Yeah, that that definitely speaks well to him. Um, I thought he looked like a Hallmark lead. Mm, and agreed. His, his... Looks, a little, looks a little sickly. Maybe it's the white <laughs> background, but it's just like, is he getting enough iron? I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's his best photo. I did look at his Instagram, and I think he, he looked much more handsome on his not that he doesn't look handsome here but like he just looked more mm, at striking. ease on his ins- yeah, like striking on his instagram he is sort of fading into this background with his light blue shirt his bio was very uh, he looked like a hallmark lead his bio was very hallmark lead it was like midwest upstanding midwesterner which i'm sure he did not personally say but it kind of strikes me as if it's true great and if he said it huge red flag feels like they're really trying to sell us on him and I'm That's just like, true. Eh, I don't know. He's, You're not he's sold. not. He's not doing it for me. No. Okay. Maybe he did say picture. one funny thing that I hope he specifically said, which is James knows enough French to get himself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> like tricking other women into think tricking women into thinking he like knows French or like to like be in France and. I think it's trouble. very possible that he knows the phrase menage a trois and that's it. <laughs> Voulez vous coucher yeah. avec moi? Ce soir, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Enough that's to all. get himself in trouble. That, that is enough to get in trouble, I would <laughs> say. Um, okay, next we have Joe, a tech operations director. Joe is like not my cup of tea. I wrote down pass. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about the fun fact that he is a, quote, proud plant daddy? We'll see. I mean, this is another thing that I think you should have to say on dating apps. Like, are you a plant killer or are you a plant daddy? <laughs> I guess because I don't think can, I can't would... you be both. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. I could use a plant daddy in my life, I guess, but I because I, I, I'm a plant killer. Um, but that is probably I felt okay about it. How did, you didn't like it? I don't like the term daddy unless it's a child referring to their father. Unless it is the specific <laughs> intended use. And even then, That's there's it. an age limit. Yeah, I would say like, if you were to hear me saying like, Happy Father's Day, Daddy, like at, at my current age, it would be Why do like, you have to say really it in that sick. tone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's just something weird about it to me. I don't There I don't is like a really it. cool plant shop here that pl- sells tank tops that say Plant Daddy. And they are cute. I don't own one, Juliet. It's a little me. bit different. It's like a little bit different to me. Um... 
like an ironic shirt and an ironic tank top is kind of like funny, like to wear at the gym. But I don't know for a man or whomever. I don't know. Joe just kind of cracked me up because like he's super jacked. He's in tech and he likes EDM. It's like, yeah, okay, let me guess three things about the Bachelorette, <laughs> Bachelorette contestant. <laughs> he loves to go to Vegas for a concert, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Next, we have Joey, who is the tennis pro. And this is an archetype that, honestly, we don't have enough on enough of in reality TV. A, a guy who left his career to move to Hawaii and be a tennis pro? I fucking love it. Let's get this man on the next season of White Lotus. That sounds great. <laughs> That's a great character on White Lotus. I mean, yeah. Joey's life seems... He also got three asterisks. <laughs> like, Joey's also very hot. Joey's very good looking. He, <laughs> in his video, notably talks really slowly. Like oh, he no. just seems no, like, like in a really laid back way. Like it just doesn't seem he's like on he's, island time. Yeah. Like he's not performing. He's just like, yeah, I'm a, he did call it something different, like a tennis, pro, like a teaching tennis professional, I think. Um, but he just, he genuinely seems very laid back, which I think would be like a really appealing quality if you're charity and you're nervous and you just meet this guy who has a genuinely calm energy, who lives in Hawaii, uh, is really good looking. And like his bio is just like, yeah, I spend all day teaching tennis and then I go hang out on the beach with my friends. Like, can I join my life to Joey's? He's having a great life. He's sort of He's maneuvered it so that like no one will ever tell him to grow up because it's just yeah. sort of like what he's doing is perfectly suited to to island life. So shout out to he's him. Got, it's like it's a good job. I'm sure that's a good, you know, like, yeah, it just seems like he figured it out pretty early. I will say, I think that um, the, the people of Hawaii are requesting that people stop moving from their corporate American jobs to Hawaii. But, you know, maybe I don't know when he did this. Maybe he got it under the cusp. I will say also, he's not um, like a remote worker. Like he's not like working no, for he's Salesforce. Working there. He's working there and contributing to the local economy. So at least there's that. I mean, it is a big tourism spot. So you need someone to teach tennis at the fancy hotel, of course. Sure. So, he does say he's so, getting into golf. And I'm like, Joey, one luxury sport at a time, please. Let's I know. Calm down. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, John. John also seemed computer generated to me. Everything about yeah. him, I was just like, is this is this real or is this like, is this a catfish? Uh, he would be my number one nomination for catfish, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing unique about him except for maybe that he listens to sad pop music at the gym. But even that, like Spotify has a great sad bops playlist. So like, I get it. Yeah, it, it's extremely... He talks a lot about his job as a data scientist, which is hard to get into on like an interest level. He also says he's mastered every TikTok dance trend, which first of all, can't be true. <laughs> and there is just, there's something, it's, sometimes it's great to see a grown man do a dance really well, but there's something about thinking about a grown man in his room by practicing. himself, practicing a TikTok dance trend when that's not his profession. Yeah. Setting up the ring light, doing all the clickety clacks. It's, so I don't like, I just don't like to think about it. <laughs> I agree with you. It is true. Like seeing someone make a TikTok video is the opposite of like the real glee that you get from watching a great TikTok video. Yeah. It's yeah. so awkward. It's the, it's the biggest discrepancy between like the, you know, before and after. It's awkward. All right. Next, onto my favorite name and maybe one of my favorite professions, John Henry. He's an underwater welder, but mo most crucially, he's pulled off a really impressive feat. He is t 30 years old, and he says he's only seen 20 movies in his entire life. These bios, like, movies are dying, and these bios are <laughs> they the prove proof. It. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are not into movies. John Henry specifically says that he's only seen 20 movies in his life. And, you know, it's like maybe that's John Henry's deal. Like he's just not into movies. But you can tell that a lot of these guys, they've been asked their favorite movie and they are grasping at straws. They're like, uh, Austin Powers, I guess. <laughs> like it is just, it is One not is like, a I'm movie bad crew. At, I'm bad at movie trivia. As yeah. if like, you, otherwise we'd assume you're good at it. 
Only seeing 20 movies, though, is legitimately like a hard thing to accomplish. Like you have to go out of your way for that. Because like, just think about as a kid, how many times you watch a movie with friends or like you it's like a sleepover. It's on in the background. I don't know. The foundation of one of the Ringer's most popular podcasts, The Rewatchables, is the assumption that people there's a lot of movies out there that people watch over and over again. So, yeah, I don't think know. that we have John Henry's audience. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that we've gotten him. He's probably not a podcast guy. <laughs> D- have, have we said, though, I mean, I think a huge part of this is that John Henry is an underwater welder. This man is spending all his time underwater <laughs> or most of his working life underwater. There's just, first of all, that's, I love John Henry. I He's, do too incredibly okay in his picture he looks really cute he almost looks wet like he kind of looks (laughs) he just got out of the water (laughs) his cheeks are flushed and he just like kind of looks like he's been working which is like not something you usually see and he's cute and he has almost like a rounded face which is also not something you usually say i will say in his video very chiseled any any sort of any sort of roundness completely goes away which you know in his video he's like super hot. He calls himself a commercial diver. He just like, he's giving romance cool. novel. Like, cool. It, he's commercial diver. Fuck yeah. I love and it. And he says he's shy. I'm, whew, he's probably, he's, he might be my first impression, Rose. He's very cute. I'm very into John Henry as well. Also, John Henry's perfect name for both Bachelorette and a romance novel. Send this guy to North Carolina. Let's get him a Nick in a Nicholas Sparks adaptation ASAP. North, oh, North Carolina, conveniently where I live. See you there. <laughs> Can I read one of his fun facts, which is sure. John Henry prefers ornamental grasses over flowers. <laughs> Me too, John Henry. Great point. It's great. So specific. That's way better than being like plant daddy. Way better. Yeah, for sure. Yes, that's an actual plant <laughs> that's, daddy. That's it. That's being a plant daddy. It's being not a plant daddy is having specific <laughs> opinions about plants. <laughs> being a plant daddy is preferring ornamental grasses to flowers. <laughs> can't wait to see him on my screen <laughs> john henry we love you um all right josh josh quit he claims a lucrative career on wall street and a grad program at harvard though his bio says harvard grad student um to work for a nonprofit in affordable housing you gotta read to the end juliet he's not adding up to me he started a second harvard grad program after <laughs> quitting the first one he is a he is a twice Harvard grad program attendee. I just don't believe that. I'm sorry. Maybe you I don't. I think there's some details being elided. Like maybe he was doing a, doing a joint degree and he quit one, he did the other. I don't know. Can you just be like, ah, Harvard him out and then come back for a second program? I just it don't says know. after getting accepted into Harvard for a second time, Josh is ready to get, which like, I don't know. Seems like he was doing okay without the grad degree. Like he was, he was getting jobs. Do you have to go to the graduate program? He sounds like a real saint because he also talks about like raising his brothers, which in one way is like a green flag. He seems selfless. But in another way, if you talk about being selfless that much, is it because your personality is really dependent on the idea that people see you as selfless? I don't know. Right. Josh was sending it me into a bit of an existential crisis. Must you be seen as altruistic or are you altruistic? Right. It's, is there Can any it true be altruism? Both? I don't know. Is there any true altruism in this world? Who's to say? Let's get into it right here on Bachelor Party. (laughs) And we'll say we're getting some of what we want from Josh, which is we're learning what kind of traveler he is. He camped in 27 national parks before he was six, and he loves a sunrise hike. Those are two red flags for me. I'm just (laughs) like, that's a no. (laughs) To be fair, I think camping in 27 national parks before you're six tells me what kind of traveler Josh's parents are. But yeah, it's it's in him now because he likes hikes, which... Unfortunately, also a no for me. <laughs> Same here. I, last time I did the sunrise hike was in Israel and it was nice. And I was just huh. like, cool, I'm done forever. Yeah, Thanks. this was good. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb with a K. I love, I love Caleb K, by the way. Caleb K with a K is uh, offended by mayonnaise. Many people are. I'm not, I'm not including that as like anything noteworthy. And I would say, in fact, Caleb with a K, who is a construction salesman from Georgia, really had a grasp for anything interesting about him. So doesn't bode well. I think he's out early. The only thing is he he also went to Auburn. So they'll connect over that, I guess. He's from Georgia. He went to Auburn. Like they have things in common, but his bio was quite 
farce. And I also think that a lot of times the bachelorettes, especially the bachelorettes, like don't really end up liking having a having an original connection, like a connection outside of the show yeah. with them. Khalid. Khalid likes SZA. And I was like, nice. I'm into yeah. that. And he also said that he would like to have the ability to teleport. And I completely agree. That is something that I wish is possible. Basically, that I could just like snap my fingers and be somewhere else to eliminate the need for planes, cars, etc. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely <laughs> make the travel industrial complex of dating a lot more interesting. Oh, I was going to say, it would make it so that you didn't need to swim to your Beyonce concert. I mean, I basically am under the impression that I can teleport. So <laughs> already living that lifestyle without the superpower of it all. <laughs> he said that he would love to have his own farm someday, which is actually that is totally possible. But a lot of these guys said things that were like they'd like to have another job one day that had nothing to do with their current job. And I was just wondering if they were being like, um, someone that I liked earlier said that he wanted to be the head of the CIA. And yes. I was like, what question is being asked that these guys are like? I think that was Doton. It was Doton. It's yeah. like, currently, I am medical specialist. Currently, I am questionably a doctor. <laughs> One day, I would like to be the head of the CIA. <laughs> Also, what do you think that entails being head of the CIA? It's like probably a really stressful job, just to be clear. More oh, stressful. yeah. No, it makes me think that he does not know what the CIA does. <laughs> That's a You should not want to do that. That's a problematic aspiration. I completely agree. Um, next, we have Michael, a yacht captain. And listen, we've got an opening. Captain Lee, he's like maybe retiring. Let's send this man to Bravo. What's he doing on ABC? Juliet, you cannot imagine how much I lost my mind at this <laughs> career. Whatever you have for doctors, I have for yacht captains. I have not been this excited about a career since Grocery Store Joe because I am... I mean, I, I know everyone's obsessed with him, but like, I love going to the grocery store and I love watching Below Deck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, uh, Michael has a, has a cute picture He's cute. He, he's very cute. Back. He kind of reminds me of like a, a Captain Jason type. I'm just like, this man belo belows on, be belongs on below deck. If you are this good looking and a yacht captain, you need, you have one career path and it is below deck captain. I watched his little video from ABC and he is like even cuter. Incredible smile, incredible dimples. I misspoke earlier. He's my first impression, Rose. <laughs> I will give it it's, out four more times before the day is done. It's still John Henry for me, but okay. or, or maybe Aaron B. I liked Aaron B. a lot, but uh, I agree with you. It's just like, what are we doing here? Let's get him on the right show. I think that this is like the Bachelor copywriters getting this wrong, but they also said such and such and such when he's not spending time on his yacht. Right. He has a yacht? No. Well, maybe he captains one. It's like Captain Glenn doesn't own the Parsifal 3, but he's been on Captain it for several Glenn seasons. Captain Glenn does have a yacht, though. He <laughs> That's has true. Yacht. That's true. But how big is it? I mean, I think yacht could be used loosely when referring to his own yacht. But how big do you think I need it to be? Not that big. <laughs> do you get seasick? No. Oh, I do. So I was because like for me, I love below deck, but like yacht life, I don't think I could I could sustain. I get too sick. I could do it. I could do it. And I will with Michael as his bride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, Nick, an HR executive who said if he could cook a dream meal for any four people, he would pick. This is honestly a, an absolutely fantastic list. Keanu Reeves, A+. Plus. Bill Burr, not an A+, plus, but like interesting, tells me uh -huh. a lot about Nick. Uh -huh. Ta Taylor Swift, okay. And Charity. Well, I guess he's on the show, so whatever. But I just think this is like a very revealing list and I absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think they should always have to say the answer to this question. Like this should always be included because I bet there are some clunkers. Definitely. I will say major negative for Nick and this is clearly trying to get us to respond. It's clickbait. Here we are. His favorite local eatery is Walmart. It's like, okay, man, you live in New Jersey. What could you that mean? It's just like, do you like to just like get like a special there? I actually haven't been to Walmart in so long. I don't know what their food offerings are, but like, it does always smell like chicken. Like when you walk <laughs> in, it like Sounds immediately, gross. not in a, like in a good way, I guess. I don't know. <gasps> oh God. It's not well, his favorite eatery. It's just no. not. 
It's like, there's definitely at least like three good Italian restaurants near you, man. You live in Bayonne. Um, all right. Peter, another pilot, Pete. They did this on purpose. I'm worried. Of, I just like, I don't want him to be the bachelor. We'll say he has got a common addiction, which is chapstick. You know that chapstick is addictive. Like if you keep using it, you need to keep using it. I always thought that was true about Carmex. Oh, is it only true about Carmex? I thought it was all about chapstick. I mean, <laughs> I will say that I am an obsessive user of tiny vassal, tiny lip Vaselines. Mm. And so I think you can get addicted to the feeling. I, there was like some urban legend when I was in elementary school that Carmex had like small flecks of fiberglass in it. And so it got you addicted I, to it. Yes, I remember that. That <laughs> Maybe urban it's legend true. as well. Pass it on. <laughs> Let's move on. We don't have time for another pilot, Pete. Sean. Sean has very noticeable hair and apparently he takes great pride in it. Which made, Sean's only 25, which made me wonder if he's looked into his master lineage about um, hair retention in his, in his family because I'm worried for him. He's only 25, so he probably has not really had to confront any ideas about hair loss. And it comes from the mother's side, so I hope he knows that too. I'm going to put this on par with, I wonder how he feels about trampolines. That your mind immediately was like, great hair. Hope you don't lose it. I told you I'm hungover. So I, I think at 25, especially if you're proud of your hair, you can already and should. If you, that's, it's no, it's be fine. Pro, no, be proactive. Get on the vitamin regi- regimen. Talk to a dermatologist. Like, do what you need to do. No shame in hymns or Roman or whatever it takes, man. If you if that gives you a source of pride and identity, hold on to it. Totally. Like, it is absolutely fine to lose your hair at any age if it is something that you're comfortable with. But hair is basically the only thing that men are sort of, like, judged and assessed by on the level that women are. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe we should just write Sean a note that this is just something that he might want to be thinking about. He reminds me of um, Jordan Kimball, like mm, facially. Yes, he looks like Jordan. I see it. Is giving me a real negative taste in my mouth about him. He's another software sales rep who I don't know why I'm just like throwing shade at, but I, I just, I, I think it's such a funny like bachelor thing. And he says, and it says he has a great career. And I'm like, does he? I don't know. <laughs> it's mean. I'm Next. sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. I'm sure it's great. Spencer. Spencer is not the only father this season, but he is the consummate dad of the bios. He's got big dad energy. I'm like, I get it. You're a dad. He's also the one who said his hero is Anthony Bourdain. Right. He also, because he's a single dad... And then I looked at his photo, immediately reminded me of Yosef from mm. Claire's season. Forgot about was him. so terrible. <laughs> what did he say? He was... Every, and everyone always does that joke where they're like, Yosef's daughter could be watching this at home. <laughs> like, doesn't Charity know that Yosef's daughter could be watching this? Um, which, like, is endlessly funny to me. So once again, for no reason, completely judgmental of Spencer. He's also wearing what a shirt that would make me think he's a yoga instructor. Mm. Yeah. Spencer um, seems like a like bad news to me. Bad vibes from Spencer. Maybe it's because you said Yosef, but I still... I, it I is just, because I said Yosef. It's not I was not getting fair. villain already. I was getting villain already, to be fair. Okay. <laughs> Next. Tanner. Mortgage lender. You know, it's a predatory predatory industry, so that makes me a little bit nervous. But you know, maybe he's a, he's one of the good guys. He's really into dogs. He's the dog guy of of the cast. Which, if you've been listening to me for a long time, and if you have, thank you. I I'm notably <laughs> not a dog person. I would so. love to take this moment to say thank you, and also still not a dog person. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet loves camp, not a dog person. <laughs> No dogs at camp. Actually, there were, but like they weren't part of my experience. Not for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> he is one of the ones that is uh, also a fitness instructor. And it shows in his video. This is... He, he looks he looks perfectly great in his photo. He's a lot hotter in his in his little video. He's very good looking in his, in his so, uh, short bio video. For some reason, these photos for men and women every season, they always make them look less attractive than they actually are, which like maybe is good. They're managing our, our expectations, but I'm just like, 
Get a different photographer and better lighting. It's really weird. It's, it's, it's a lighting problem, in my opinion. And right, this one is probably a lighting problem, too, because he's wearing a light shirt. This season, they seem to be playing around a lot with movement. Like, the guys are in a... <laughs> he is basically in profile and then turned to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> which I which I don't think is showing his particular best. It's angle. like a cover girl photo shoot. Yeah, like, like I like, think they were like, work it, work it. Yeah, Tanner, give us some shoulder. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Makes me think of the scene in the wonderful Lizzie McGuire movie where she's like walking down the yes. uh, the runway. Put him on the light up igloo and call it a day. Yeah, with Franco de Moncudatina. Is that a seminal movie for you? I was a little Absolutely. old for it, but it still is for me. I I was I think at like prime age, and that uh that montage just lives in my head. And I thought, I've never seen more beautiful outfits. How <laughs> do I get in them? I also just like love Rome. and Everything about that movie. I don't know. It's like, it's seminal. Anyway, that's another podcast as well. Um, Taylor, loan officer from Ohio. I had nothing to say about Taylor. In fact, I skipped him in my notes, Jody. I was so negative. But looking back on this, I will just say, takes forever to fold his laundry. Same. I do it in front of the oh, TV. Yeah. It's it's a miracle I if I do laundry. it at all. I hate Taylor, laundry. Oh, it's absolutely my least favorite chore. Just the worst. Awful. Taylor, like the I think the first line of his bio is that he has class clown energy, mm. which I think is an interesting thing to say about yourself. And he basically would have had to have said it unless the copywriters really went rogue. And I noted specifically when I watched his little intro video wow, this is dry. Like, drier than anyone else's. And I guess sometimes that happens with, like, people who like to joke around as, like, it doesn't come off immediately. But I got questions of how Taylor sees himself and how he comes across. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll warm up on camera, but that's yeah. a good point. Like, so you think you're the class cat? Also, like, do you want to be the class clown? I don't know. It's like, I'm the jester. Unfortunately, I think I also have cl- kind of class clown energy. No, you don't. It's not what I lead with. You're funny, but you don't have class clown. You're very funny, but you don't have class clown energy. Come on, Jody. Thanks, Juliet. You're welcome. Next, Warwick. What a great name. Love Ro- love Warwick. He likes Legos. Um, and he has very, very uh, low or low aspiration dreams uh, as romantic. His dream date is getting dinner and seeing a play. Uh, And he also dreams of going to an English Premier League game. These are very achievable. Juliet, I feel like you're underselling Warwick, first of all, by saying (laughs) Warwick, he loves Legos. That is one (laughs) of the facts about him. The main fact about him is that he's really, he looks like a Disney prince D- Disney to me. Star. He looks like a Disney star. Yeah. He looks like a live action Disney prince. Like you could absolutely... At Disney World. He's at- like playing... He's like playing Prince Eric or something. And Charity looks like a Disney a princess. Disney princess. Totally. And I want to see them together in you know, a photo Char- shoot right now. Charity gives me Snow White at Disney World. Like yes. that would be her character. I can see her in the striped skirt that comes with the Snow White act- um, uh, costume. I can't envision her walking, but I can envision her floating. She like yes. walks at a float. Um, yeah, but she thing- also could be Cinderella and going to the to the ball. Not yes. Cinderella, the maid, but Cinderella like glammed up. I I think she's wearing red on her first night, but I could definitely see her in a in a Cinderella blue. The thing about Warwick though is that he's this kind of like adorable and pretty like a Disney prince, but he's a construction manager. And in his video, he says he builds houses. That's what he says his job is. And I like that dichotomy. Bodes well. Reminds me of Tyler Cameron, one of our great construction people. You know, it reminded me of Tyler Cameron too, Julia, but I was too afraid to say it because you do not like when I compare people to Tyler Cameron. I'm not comparing. It's just reminiscent of being a construction manager. Some people come along on reality TV and you're just like, this will never be, ma- never be matched. It's true of just first like two seasons of Jersey Shore. I now know it's true of Love Island UK season three. It's true of, of like some challenge season, some challenge characters. And in the Bachelor universe, it's true of Hannah Brown season, including the majesty. Majesty. I can't speak today because I've like had one glass of wine and I can't handle it. The majesty of Tyler Cameron. I mean, like, he's just a hot, wonderful guy. And yeah, nothing. Well, no one will it's ever much compare. like Survivor, I think, where it creates an archetype yeah. that then you continue to hope to achieve. And you never I, will. And you never will. And I, I don't know what, that Warwick will, but I do like him. And he's wearing a stylish shirt and he has great hair. 
I don't think I'll ever find love on The Bachelorette again like I did with Tyler. So that's it for me. It's fine. I've accepted it. <laughs> guess, guess your she's retiring. It's over. <laughs> I can still have fun. Aaron B, please deliver. <laughs> I can still have fun. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is forever unbroken. I am a changed woman, but I can still have fun. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Xavier, final guy of the day. Biomedical scientist. Love it. Hope that's real. He's a six foot six scientific researcher. Is this oh. my dream bachelorette contestant? Perhaps. Love it. He, yeah. And he calls himself a PhD student. I think he calls himself a doctoral student. So I guess he's getting a PhD, I think probably at UNC because he also said he was from Chapel Hill um, in his video in biomedical science. And I got to say, he is wearing like a cotton knit polo buttoned up to the neck, which I love it. really sells that he's a biomedical scientist. I also think he's a really good match for charity because they both are very focused on their parents' relationships. Like he's like, my parent, he says his parents been married for 30 years and she talked about that a lot with Zach and in her bio. I, I have high hopes for Xavier. I think he's going far. Also, he's from the South. Yeah. You know, like in complimentary fields. I feel really good about him. He seems I like agree. a nice guy. I thought the same thing. I did find myself throughout these bios really wondering what kind of person Charity likes. And I don't know. Because like there are a lot of just different seeming kind of guys. And Xavier seems like a true nerd. And I mean that in the best way possible. And I could see her liking that. Me too. I think they could be a really good match. It's a great... We started and ended on two very positive notes, Aaron B. and Xavier. <laughs> Jody, this has been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for joining me for this rollicking run through the Bachelorette Bro Bios. I will be back with Callie and Charity on Monday night. Reminder, the Bachelorette is now on at 9 p.m. So this podcast will be coming to you at 11 p.m. Um, and go we'll back back to our regular Monday Thursday schedule Thursday B sides for some complimentary chats. Jody, I hope that you'll be back. Um, thank you to Jade Whaley for producing this episode. For more Jody, don't forget to check out the Ringer Reality TV podcast. And she'll be back here. I hope. Will you come back, Jody? I will actually insist upon it. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great weekend. 